Call to order the Kern Council Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting of Thursday, August 17th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Roll call, please. Ion. Present. Halton. Here. Blades. Crump. Here. Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Yes. Reyna. I'm here. Scrivener. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Bill Smith. Here. Trujillo. Here. And Vasquez. Here. Thank you. Thank you. And is anyone from Ridgecrest on the line? Adam, um, which organization are you with? I'm with Caltrans District 9. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record for making a presentation. Any public statements? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tony Renteria. I'm the Education Outreach Coordinator at Bike Bakersfield and the Program Manager for the Current Active Transportation Alliance, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about right now. Um, so the Current Active Transportation Alliance has helped so many in Kern County thus far. We have been holding bicycle maintenance clinics around Kern County this month. We have reached seven communities thus far and have another six more to go. The attendance has been great. We are also gearing up for our community bike rides around Kern County and currently have Teddy Bischoff of Kern, Valley, of Kern River Valley and Kevin Talley of Oildale running their local rides. <clears throat> the flyers I have handed out give you more details on the upcoming maintenance clinics, community bike rides, and final stakeholder meetings, as well as our website at bikebakersold.org. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Great. We have any questions? See none. More bikes, more better. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Any other public statements? Seeing none, we will move to the consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by KernCog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council regarding the item before action is taken. Any public comment? Does any council member wish to remove an item for separate consideration? Seeing none. Motion to approve consent. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Or I guess we need a roll call vote, I'm sorry. Ion? Aye. Helton? Yes. Crump? Yes. Warney? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Para? Yes. Prout? Yes. Reyna? Yes. Scribner? 
Aye. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Trujillo? Yes. And Vasquez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 2023 Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment Number 7, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment Number 7 includes revisions to the State Highway Regional Choice Program, the State Highway Operation and Protection Program, Transit Program, and Non-Motorized Program. The public review period ends August 18th. The Kirkcog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on August 21st. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask that the chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. Public hearing is open. Are there any comments from the public? Any from council members? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report, District Six. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, members. I think you let Kirsten go first last right, month, I think, right. so I think it's my turn. Plus, you got to vote today, so I'll take my turn. Um, just we have a couple updates on Clean California. You know, Clean California, we think, has been a very successful program. Um, and as many of you know, it's, it was ske it's scheduled to sunset in 2024, but we are attempting to get a budget change proposal to extend the litter abatement cleanup component as well as the art. Um, in our district, per se, we, we actually uh, – achieved actually overachieved the most of our goals so we did pick up 95,000 cubic yards of litter we held 18 dump days and we've hired about 32 employees for litter pickup many of which are stationed here in delano in the bakersfield area so i'm um, looking forward to hopefully extending that program uh the, the cycle two local grants as you know those applications were already turned in we had three from the kern county region maricopa mcfarland and wasco um, we expect to have announcements for the uh, successful recipients later on in september also, a call related to Clean California for a district transit partnership program was announced. Uh, I think I talked about it a little bit last month. Those applications are due August 31st. So uh, many of the transit agencies did receive an a, a email from Jennifer Nishikawa, our Clean California coordinator, and did get some positive feedback. So um, a couple agencies have circled back, and we'll be working with them to do a, some kind of a Clean California transit application submittal. Not a lot of money available in this space. There's about $15 million available, but it could do some kind of beautification to help facilitate and encourage transit. Also, over the last month or two, we've been working very closely with, with current COG staff on, on uh, doing an infra application for the USDOT discretionary grant program for the 9958 connector. So I do want to thank um, um, Kern Cog and their staff are working closely with us and those applications are due the 21st so we're in the final phases of getting that thing turned in and hopefully get some funds for that 9958 missing connector ramp. Um, also you'll see at our um, our state road rest site areas we're going to start putting um, memorials to honor the following workers so in District 6 we've, we have lost 10 over the years there's been 191 uh, since Caltrans um, since 1921 from Caltrans total, but 10 from our district. We did lose one this year, Ali Shabazz. This is the first one we've had since 1999, but as you can imagine, one is too many. Um, so you'll start seeing the memorials pop up at the various rest stop areas. As for projects, quick couple updates. Uh, on State Route 99, the rehab project between US 99 and White Lane, uh, still in construction, um, lowering the lane, the three and four lanes, and rehabbing the northbound number two lane between 223 and State Route 119. Expected completion date for that project is fall 2023. Uh, we continue to work on the State Route 43 Seventh Standard Roundabout project. Uh, we are in the environmental phase and we anticipate circling our environmental document next month. Um, the uh, Union, this feels like kind of an anticlimactic announcement for the Union Avenue Hawk. Um, try to get named after you, Chairman Smith. No success, unfortunately. <laughs> apologies. But um, it was activated on June 21st. They had a bunch of electrical issues, but it, it is up and running. So Great. glad that finally got done. Uh, the Santa Fe Roundabout uh, is project located in Shafter. We're in the design phase, and we're hoping to get that project ready to advertise in spring of next year. Uh, Maricopa Highway, we have a rehab project. This project is a rehab about nine miles of pavement from State Route 33 to Capello Street. Uh, that project achieved uh, rate of list status and we'll be getting construction allocation in our October CTC meeting. So we're expected to be able to advertise that project this winter. Uh, the left turn channelization project on State Route 119 in Taft, uh, we're about 85% complete. There's some electrical issues need to be worked out. So that project suspended until PG&E provides power 
in September. At that point, we'll wrap up that project and do the remaining electrical work. The Pumpkin Center uh, Rehab Project, this is on State Route 90, 119. Uh, that project is in design and right-of-way phase, and we hope to get that project certified, uh, right-of-way certified and ready to list spring of next year. The State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout, um, that project, the roundabout is open to traffic. There's a little bit of electrical work and punchless eyes remaining, so they should have that project buttoned up uh, next month of September. Uh, similar for 223 and 184 roundabout, that project's about 95% complete, and there's some remaining punch list and electrical work done. They expect to wrap that project up on September 15th. Uh, the Morning Drive uh, Rehab Project, this is on State Route 184. That project advertises this past spring. Uh, bids were open August 10th, so we expect construction to start uh, January of, of next year. Uh, bids did come in a little high on that project, but uh, work should be getting started out there soon. Uh, another rehab project, Weed, Weed Patch Highway on State Route 184. Next to that project, another project is doing rehabilitation, a lot of complete streets elements. Um, that project admittedly has been delayed a little bit. Um, the project is in design and right of way phase and expected to advertise not till November next year. Those delays are, are strictly tied to, we're crossing the UPR uh, railroad. And if you think working at Caltrans is tough, try working the railroads. Um, but that has set that project back, unfortunately. Um, Council Member Smith, we talked a little bit about 58 out there, which you brought up a lot of the rough pavement out there. As, as you indicated, we've done some dig out work out there to, to improve a little bit as a temporary fix. Um, so that's helped a little bit. Then we have two subsequent projects coming up where we'll be working on the concrete pavement in the westbound direction to rehab uh, that lane. And then that'll be a second project coming up. It'll probably be, that won't go out for another couple of years, but that'll go further. Uh, East that location and address the uh, the pavement um, east of the concrete lanes. Uh, with that, that completes my update. Be happy to answer any questions. I just have to ask you on Union Avenue, the uh, lane reduction project. Yep, that project was uh, we, so all of our Clean California projects that we're doing were were cleared to go by the end of the fiscal last fiscal year, June thirtieth. Mm -hmm. But that one's scheduled to award next month, so you should see construction activities around the corner. What about the Garces Circle? Garces Circle, uh, that's expected to award, I'm showing August 22nd for awards, so a little earlier than um, Great. UNAVIS. So all those, you should see a lot of these projects kicking off because we had to get those ready to go by June 30th. And so you're seeing those advertised and awarded um, probably late summer, early Good. fall, most of these projects. So you should see a lot of activity occurring. Great. Um, Michael, I, I, I have a question. Yes. Um, so I'm really happy about um, September 15th for the roundabout 184, mm -hmm. uh, Weed Patch Highway 223. What is the process if we could get a roundabout going on Adobe? It's just up um, west of the 184. West of 184? Uh -huh. I don't have that one on my radar screen, but we could, we could have a conversation about it. I'm not familiar with that intersection the process. off the top of my head. It's on stereo. It's, 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 it's just got a blinking light right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Adobe um, north of, I mean, west of the 184. Yeah, I, I think that probably warranted a, a discussion itself. Um, as I, I'm, I'm sure Director Akimi could test. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of a process to look at things like operations, safety, um, and then always funding is the critical path for those. Our, our roundabouts, admittedly, are coming in pretty expensive right mm -hmm. now, um, but happy to have a, a, a conversation. Is it less expensive to just have the light? The light that's on? Yeah, like a, a green light, red. Oh, yellow, traffic yellow. signal? Tra tra traffic signal. Um, I would say traffic signals are coming a little cheaper. We, we have a process we go through where we vet out intersection control, known as ICE. Actually, they're changing the terminology to, to ICE soap now, but it, it vets out the safety and the benefits of a roundabout compared to a signal to a four way stop. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have to look at all those things. Unfortunately, I don't have much history on that location, okay. but. But happy to look into Th it. There is a, a, f a flashing red there. Right, right now it's just a flashing red. Okay. So four-way flashing red only. Okay. Yeah. Happy to look into that. Thank you. Any other questions for District 6? District 9. Good evening. I just have a few things. Um, the SR58 truck climbing lane project approval and environmental document, um, our documents are in executive circulation uh, being reviewed right now and so those documents will be signed next week because we are now fully funded through the shop funding program 
we will move immediately into the next phase. So a few things for on construction. Uh, we have Mojave Bypass paving going on on the eastbound lanes of 58 from just west of exit 60, 165 to 172. And so um, one lane will remain open at all times, but we will be closing uh, one lane for part of the, part of the time. Uh, the Rose, Rosamond Zero Escape project on SR14, the northern out, northbound outside lane and shoulder will be closed um, to allow for access for trucks. Um, hauling material Monday through Friday from 7 to 3.30 p.m. So drivers may experience some delays, but they'll be minimal. Whoops. On the Freeman 3 CAPM project, um, that construction began this week and it's almost wrapped up. So um, that's on Red Rock Canyon, uh, north of Red Rock Canyon. And so um, the pavement is complete and there, we need to do some sign replacement. So that one's done. Um, on SR58, the Boron uh, rest, uh, Safety Roadside Rest Area, sewage system repair that has been ongoing is finally underway and it's estimated to be completed by the end of the month. So that should be reopening soon. And then the, our long-awaited long Tehachapi Maintenance Station construction is getting underway this month as well. Um, we, are at, we have three new projects that we're initiating in Eastern Kern County. One is um, on 58, it's the Tehachapi Pavement Project. One is a 202 Cap M in Golden Hills, which will have some complete street elements. And the third is the uh, uh, last minute that we've added, which is the 58 Cal City Boulevard Interchange Project. And so we are initiating all of those projects and we'll be doing public outreach um, coming soon. And that's all I have. Great. You mentioned uh, the truck climbing lane documents in executive circulation, and then what is the next phase you, that you said it goes to? Plan specifications and estimates. So that's the final design of the project. Super. Yeah. Time frame on that? I might have to check, but probably about a year. Okay. And then on the Cal City 58 interchange, what are they? Uh, anticipating there a frontage road or signalization or we're looking at both our preferences to put an interchange um, but we're looking at the safety index and we have to weigh that against the cost of the project to figure yeah. out what we can fund yeah that's a so, serious so we'll be looking at both options yeah it's a very serious at grade crossing that's very busy but thank you thank you any other you know, Ki questions? Kirsten on the truck climbing lanes the mm -hmm. Combining of that with the shop project is scheduled for the October CTC meeting. Is that still yes, accurate? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have a few items on this agenda. I attended the June 28th and 29th CTC meeting in Sassoon City. Kirsten was there with me. Um, there was a significant pre presentation on a project that's important to Kern, Alancha Cartega, even though it's not in, that's the conversion of 395 from a two-lane road through the communities of Alancha and Cartega. Uh, it's the most time I've ever seen dedicated to uh, one item. I think there was a total of over three hours of discussion just on the over over two days and did you watch the ctc meeting this month there was a lot more discussion about it yes mm -hmm. i did so there was also a ctc meeting yesterday and today i did not attend in person but um, watched some of it and staff watched all of it and there was also an update on um, alancha cartega and maybe kirsten next month you can give us an update on uh, the progress or if things are worked out with the Native American tribes or not? Sure, I can do that. Thank you. Um, and I just asked Kirsten a question, but uh, for anyone who is interested, and I think uh, uh, members from Tehachapi, May, or, or Kern County, the next CTC meeting is October 18th and 19th. It's in Madera. I will be attending in person. There'll be several items of interest, but one of the um, items that we here at Kerncog and um, 
Supervisor Scribner, Mayor Smith, and others have been working on literally for decades is that truck climbing lane project. So I will be there for that. If any of you would like to join us, let us know, or it's close enough so you can come um, there and back. And I will let you know a few days before whether it is likely to be heard the first day or the second days, or the second day. The meetings um, typically start at 1 p.m. on Wednesday, go till about 5, 5.30, and then um, start up the next day and run from 9 a.m. to noon. So don't have to stay overnight if you don't, don't want to. Um, we received approval of the Kern Cogs Federal Certification Review. Um, I think I, there's something in your folder I will go over um, with you. And thank you for all of you who participated in that process. I think last month I said we had unofficial. Now it's semi-official. Hmm. Over the past, past month, I continued to have multiple meetings on State Route 99 and 58, 204 and Union Avenue, 7th Standard and 43. Now, speaking of uh, 7th Standard and 43, Michael, um, just north of 7th Standard and 43, um, can you get with uh, Mayor Prout about um, the design of the roundabout at Los Angeles? She had some questions for me earlier today. Um, State Route 33 safety improvements at the CTC meeting that I attended in person. Uh, the District 6 di Director, Diana Gomez, had to go to the Commission um, to ask for extra money on that project for increased costs due to adding shoulders, which is something that we asked for. So I want to publicly thank her for doing that, and the Commission um, uh, thankfully gave her the money. All she had to do was say it was for safety, and they said, no problem. Uh, had the monthly update on State Route 46 um, today, and I drove through the project, uh, I believe, yesterday or the day before. Um, the project that's been ongoing through the community of Lost Hills, those of you, many of you drive through there, will be wrapped up in less than a month. And in about Within a month of that wrapping up, the next project will start, which will widen through the last segment, uh, which is through the oil fields in Kern County. That project should take about a year, and we will, when that is done, we will have everything in Kern County on 46 widened from I-5 all the way to the San Luis Obispo Kern County line. It's only taken 21, 22 years. <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> uh, right. Kirsten already mentioned the truck climbing lanes. Um, I also attended um, a dinner last week in Fresno where I had um, a pre-meeting with the Caltrans director, CTC chairwoman, and the District 6 director regarding 58 and 99. And uh, one thing I will add now, it's related to this meeting, is um, I've told s some of you, but the CTC has published their meeting agenda for 2024. They will be holding a full California Transportation Commission meeting in Bakersfield in October of 2024. Many of you um, attended um, a CTC town hall, I believe it was in 2016, where Kern Cog arranged for a train ride, antique train ride, up through the Tatchby Loop we will be hosting a similar ride for the full CTC Commission. And if you're interested in helping with that meeting, Bakersfield will be one of the hosts as well as Kern Cog. Uh, please let me know. And I know uh, I will, all of you as board members will be invited to the train ride. And I have uh, nothing else on this adjust agenda, Mr. Chairman, uh, subject to any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions for the director? I have a question real quick. I don't know if it's for Director Hakimi or for Caltrans. Uh, 178 through the canyon, I drove through there last week, and they've done a really good job with the stoplight that's there and the, the up and down arm. But is there any um, news on when maybe I that road is going to? I did get an update. Michael, are you okay with me handling it? Yeah. I got an update from um, um, Diana Gomez, the district director. Um, 
they had to bring in uh, geotechnical specialists to um, consult on the um, ultimate solution. They believe that they're going to have to drive what are called micro piles, which are small piles. Those are like rods driven into the ground. Uh, they have to procure the piles, get a um, contractor on board. They believe that work will start uh, before November, and it's only a few weeks worth of work. So the one-way traffic control that's in place now will be in place for a few more months. The actual work to repair the washout um, will be repaired with, with the micropiles. But um, I've driven through there several times. There's very little delay, in, in some cases less than one minute. At the most <coughs> I've seen is two or three minutes. So it's, uh, it's something, and it gives you a break. It's almost right in the middle of the canyon, so it's, it's not bad. Thank you. Any other questions for the director? One. Um, so I was driving <coughs> south on Tejon, and it looks like, I don't know if they're going to just put one slab of, of, of um, I guess it's asphalt, um, or if they're going to, or if, uh, if is that going to go all the way into Arvin, or where is it going to um, end? It's right now on Hermosa. And a Tejon, um, right off the fifth, uh, by the fifty-eight. Mm, right uh, now, Michael, do you know anything about that? I, I don't um, know anything about that, Mayor. Yeah, um, they, they, that that road is closed right now, and I just needed to know or, or get an update if it's going to go all the way into Arvin because they did a really good job on on Comanche, just um, just doing a one layer of asphalt, but that was um, I want to say two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Um, and I don't know if that's the same project that we're going to be looking at. On Tejon? No. It, yeah, well, Tejon, is it State Highway? It's county. It's county. It's county road. It's a county road. Oh, okay. So would that be a question for our... I can, I can check with the Kern County uh, Public Works Department and get back to you, Mayor. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Any other questions? Any member statements? Yes. Ms. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick update on, I'm sure many of you have heard about the hydrogen bus fire that Golden Empire Transit had uh, last month. Uh, there was little news about it trickling out because uh, the National Transportation Safety Board was involved. They had to come uh, two, f two Fridays ago. The NTSB and other uh, interested parties came to review the video that had been taken from the bus that was waiting behind it to get fueled and also from the bus that was being fueled. So none of that information had been released yet to the media because there is a process that has to be followed by the NTSB and until they were able to come in and start doing their investigation, we really couldn't give any information. Uh, everything would be speculation anyway, not knowing what was going on. Uh, so the, all parties concerned came uh, that Friday. It was about a six hour meeting, watched the videos, looked around the bus. Now the next step will be, they will be coming back in I think two weeks, they will start disassembling the bus at that time uh, bring a we got to bring a big crane in to pick it up and look underneath first and then disassemble and it'll be a long process before we really know uh, what caused the fire uh, luckily um, the actual um, charging station acted as it was supposed to as soon as there was a spark it shut down so the actual charging hydrogen charging station fueling station uh, didn't catch fire contrary to some of the stories was the fueling station also exploded it was just the one bus that basically burned to the ground and um, uh, the only damage to the fueling station was the nozzle that was being pulled out at the time uh, other than that uh, the fueling station is should once we figure out what happened will be hopefully operable with minor repairs and the bus that was behind it the fire was so hot the front end of it 
the lights all melted out. It looked like, you know, the cartoon where the, your eyes go out like that. And the, the rear view mirrors all melted, some of the top. But other than that, there was no damage to that second bus. So that's what we know right now. We don't want to, like I said, speculate on what the cause was. As far as we know, hydrogen is a clean, safe um, fueling um, option for clean air. So well, we'll, we'll find out. It'll probably take a year before we know what's going on. Thank you. Any other member statements? Seeing none, we will adjourn that meeting and open the Kern Council of Government meeting. Same roll call. Yes. Public comments, same rules. So are there any public comments? Seeing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Does any council member wish to remove an item for separate consideration? Seeing none. Move approval of consent agenda. Second. Roll call vote, please. Vasquez. Aye. Trujillo. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Reina. Aye. Prout. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crump. Yes. And Ion. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. Um, over the past month, I have met with uh, staff members of Congressman Valadeo's staff, Obernolte's staff, Congressman Obernolte, and um, Congressman McCarthy's staff. I will be in um, Washington, D.C. Uh, second week of September for three days, and I will have meeting with all of our congressmen and our two senators, as well as I'm um, uh, trying to arrange a meeting with uh, U.S. DOT staff in the speaker's office, and I will let you know if, uh, if, if that happens to advocate uh, directly for the grant that Michael um, mentioned earlier. We're we will sum likely submit that grant tomorrow, Michael. Um, so the timing of my trip to D.C. is, is perfect to uh, advocate. We're ask and we're asking for about $25.3 million for that project. And I will report next month on how that, how that trip went. In your folder this evening is a timeline covering August through December. The letter from the U.S. Department of Transportation that I mentioned in my comments earlier. EV Ready Communities in Kern County update flyer. Schedule of cash disbursements covering May. Oh, this is uh, something that I've talked to a few of you about. The K Kern Cog is a member of CalCog, which is an organization that represents all the uh, cogs in the state. And you may have heard about $5 billion that the legislature and the governor ag agreed to in the budget going towards transit. If you look on the second page of this handout, and these are just estimates right now, the f final details are still being worked out. Uh, Kern Cog is scheduled to receive over $106 million specifically for transit. So uh, I know not all of you operate transit uh, agencies, but most of you do. So please start thinking about uh, it's a tremendous amount of money. It's a huge infusion of money on, on how you will spend that money. Kern Cog will be um, involved in distributing that money and coming up with um, the criteria following the guidelines that, that have not been released yet on how to distribute it. We don't know yet if it's going to be distributed like TDA is, whether it's strictly by population, but as soon as we know, we will share that with the TTAC and, of course, share it with you. Uh, there was also a bike maintenance flyer that um, was handed out earlier that was referenced. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? 
Any member statements? I, uh, the League of California Cities is scheduled at the same time as our next meeting. So it would be good to know if we're going to have a quorum. I will not be here. And there is no alternative, alternate from the city of Bakersfield. We don't have one either. Shafter will be gone. Wasco will be gone. Yeah, we're, Wasco's gone too. Anybody else gone? McFarland will be gone. So. Doesn't look very good. Looks like maybe we should uh, so move the meeting or cancel it. Okay. No either here, huh? We will. Um, I'll be in touch uh, about yeah, either moving it or canceling it. Right now, I'm leaning towards okay. canceling it, but we'll see if there's any urgent items yeah. that can't <laughs> wait a month. Okay. Appreciate that. I don't know. With that, we are adjourned.